Uh, Evan Siegerman, I'm looking at Pfizer. It's down three and a half percent today um, on this news of their uh, obesity drug, the twice daily pill rather than the single dose. That's what's the drag today, correct? That is correct. So this morning we got word that their once daily had some liver toxin phase one and phase two testing. They're moving forward with the twice daily. I think the nuance here is they're working at some point to reformulate that to a once daily. And I think that's what you need to be competitive with the likes of Lilly. Uh, Lilly had some great data for their oral GLP-1 at the ADA meeting um, this weekend. You're, you're making no change to your outlook on this company or the stock price of, of 49 bucks. Other analysts that Correct. I've read today are calling this, quote, a clear setback uh, or, quote, incrementally negative from other analysts I, as well. Do you not see it that way? Well, I think it is a setback because clearly, you know, we wanted this one to move forward. But I'm not throwing in the towel yet with Daniel Glipron, which is the asset that they're moving forward. They actually designed this program to reduce the risk. So they had two assets moving forward. One didn't work, so they have the other one. If we didn't have any GLP-1 in development, that I think would be a problem. I am really focused on to see if they can formulate this to a once daily. That's pretty important in my view. So I'm not throwing in the towel here at this point because they did design this program to kind of spread the risk out. What about the competition from the likes of Lilly and, and Novo? And I, I realize right. this is not going to be the greatest analogy in the world, but <laughs> who's talking about J&J's COVID vaccine, which was a twice daily, you know, not a daily, it was a double dose. Uh, and right. it was upstaged, for lack of a better word, uh, by others. W why wouldn't the same thing happen here, that if you're into one of these drugs, you're just going to go where the ease is? So that's very fair. I think when it comes to Daniel, I want to emphasize that they're moving this into phase three. So it's in striking distance of Lily's drug. The key is that twice daily formulation, which is what's the issue. But they are well within the bounds. And the data we saw from this drug, which was published in JAMA last month, the stock was up 5% on that. You're still getting that Ozempic-like efficacy. So I don't think that it is quite the J&J &J and Moderna Pfizer comparison with COVID vaccines. These are all very close. I agree that it is a setback, but I don't think it's catastrophic at this point. How are you looking at this? Yeah, I was going to say the other distinction would be that um, if one of these products gets to market, it's a very long life of, of, of that usage. Right. In other words, it's not just kind of like vaccine. You got a couple of years where Pfizer over earns. And that is what oh, the market a, is kind of saying. It's a forever thing, yeah. correct? The market, though, it, with the reaction today is interesting because the stock has really gotten to look cheap. It's got a 4.4% dividend yield. It's 10, 11 times forward earnings. So it shows you that the market feels as if the company has kind of over-earned during this period, and they don't know exactly what's next uh, in terms of being able uh, to produce another earnings driver. And, and so that's the disappointment. It's not a huge uh, drop on a single day, but it's, it's more of the same in terms of underperformance by this stock, and, and even in a tape where Big Pharma's had a little bit of a struggle. How many players are there really room for? Uh, Evan, in this space, is it is it reasonably infinite? I don't think it's infinite, but I think there's definitely room for multiple players. You have Lilly and Novo with the injectables. You have Pfizer, Lilly, this company called Structure that I cover with Orals. There are other players in earlier development. So I think that there is room for more than one, um, or even a few. You know, this could be a hundred plus billion dollar market. So I ascribe five billion in peak sales for. Pfizer's GLP-1 franchise, which is just 5% of what that whole market is. Wow. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you coming on. Evan Segerman joining us today from BMO.